Hey, well, thank you. Welcome to my second part of my video. And today we're going to talk about uh, three things that uh, I know I talked about in my first one. We're going to talk about settlements, communication, and we're going to talk about the litigation process. Okay, let's start with the litigation process. But before I go in, I hope you have already subscribed to my channel and that you hit the notification button. Okay. Communication with being pro se, communication is very, very important when you're fighting, uh, when you're litigating. I call it dispute or fighting. The reason why I say that is because you have to leave that window open. Attorneys, I mean, judges love when you communicate with the other part, the other, other uh, opponent, the defendants. It also brings about the fact that you're establishing communication. You're getting to know the the ins and outs of the defendant, and it helps you if you have to make a settlement. It's not awkward. So the course of the case can go on from the time that you file, or it can go longer than that, up to a year or two years. So you having a case, even though you may have a good case, you may have all your evidence, they, the defendants may file stuff in court, not just because it's irrelevant and it, you know, it could be that they're just filing it just for the sake of having a file. A lot of times that's what usually the case with pro se. They always try to file something. I'll give you good case in point. Uh, Equifax I've been sending me stuff saying that it, stuff that I know is, is not right. You know, they basing it on the merits and, and all of that. Yeah, some cases are based on merits, but some cases are based on what the law, what, what the Supreme Court and appellate court says, especially when it comes to the Fair Credit Reporting Act uh, regarding inc incorrect information and false information. So that's, that's one of the things. So when you start litigating, when you start filing a lawsuit, don't think that just because you filed and you have your evidence and stuff that everybody's going to say, oh, she has all her evidence, she has all her stuff together, we're going to go ahead and settle. Some will call you and ask you, what do you want? I, me personally, I'm not going to say, I would tell them, I would if they call me and say, well, you know what, we want to know uh, if you want to settle the case, what would you settle for? I don't do that. I tell them, okay, I got to, let me think about it, call you back. I may have a figure in mind. I may have something, you know, uh, but I just don't say, oh, I want this, 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 this. No, I don't. I do my research on settlements. Once again, here's my notebook. I, not this notebook, but I do my research on settlements, uh, what type of settlement, how the settlement can be, because in some cases, the settlement that you take, you will have to pay that, like if it's punitive damages. And I'm not an attorney when I say this, but if it's punitive damages, you're going to have to pay the IRS. So if it's compensatory or uh, any kind of damages other than physical damage, you will have to pay the IRS on those um, on those settlements. So you may want to be careful how you settle your case being pro se. A lot of attorneys, I'm not an attorney when I tell you this, but a lot of attorneys would, would, would tell, you know, they just make a general um, settlement and then uh, the person don't know and they go spending all this money then the following year the IRS come and say, hey, I, I remember when you got this settlement, you need to stop paying up. So you may want to think about uh, the types of settlements and stuff. If you need to find out more information about settlements, you can go to the IRS.gov. They will give you more information on, you know, what what they're going to tax you on, how they're going to tax you on, on those type of settlements. Okay. Now, when you're talking about settlements and communication, uh, you you some things you need to be more realistic about. You know, I've had people that's pro se say, well, you know what, I want it where I want to settle where they t they uh, pay my college fund. I had one lady that wanted to be on the board of Federal Express. She wanted to be the chair. She wanted stocks. She wanted all of this. You have to realize something. A settlement is not for you to stay. 
is for you to go. That's to resolve the issue, resolve that, get you out the way. It is not for you to uh, base your settlement, you know, base your life on that, you know, that you're going to be the board of Federal Express or you're going to be a board on something or you want stocks. That just doesn't happen. Depending on the type of, of um, settlement that you, you're asking, yeah, you know, you can't ask for future uh, damages, some that you think that would uh, that would cause you harm in the future. My advice, if you don't know, yeah, my nose is getting ready to get spring, I mean, uh, fall, so my nose is kind of itchy right here. I'm sorry. So, but uh, anyway, if you want to uh, find out my advice, go to an attorney, find, you know, talk to your case about it. Uh, if you're a pro se, a lot of times they'll give you advice, they give you vague, vague advice, but you know, that go into the at uh, you can also ask settlements.com, find out, you know, what type of settlement can you get? Um, if, if you're, uh, you know, what type of money you can ask for, you know, that will help. Another thing that I like to say is when you get your settlement, if you get a lump sum, you know, you can always put it into uh, something that would be that you won't be taxed on, like an annuity or or, or something that you could put into that a give interest, but you won't be taxed on that. Uh, you'll be taxed on what you spend versus or what the interest that accumulate. Again, I keep I keep saying that before you start reaching a settlement of a, any large amount or any amount you need to go ahead and go to the irs.gov or you need to go to settlements.com and then find out what would be beneficiary to you as getting a settlement. Okay. Now, the the last thing I, I really want to talk about is like we talked I talked briefly on corporate seizures, I talked briefly on communication. Uh now we're on to settlements and uh one thing I want to add let finally emphasize is when you settle, make sure you read the paperwork. Make sure you read the fine paperwork. Most settlements are confidential. That means that you can't go and just tell somebody, oh, oh you know what, they gave me $10,000 for this. No, you can't do that. Most settlements, when they do it, they do it confidential because of the simple reason. They, If it's a deep case, they don't want everybody to know what you got. Uh, you break the confidentiality when you start telling people other than your spouse or, or certain immediate family members, like close family members that may live in the house. But if you go outside of that and you start telling them what, that this is the terms and, and, and agreement to your settlement, they can sue you for that. They can get their money back and get some of your money back. So, you know, and then if you got family, you know, I'm not going to lie. I don't tell nobody nothing because... It may drag up, drag up some family members that, you know, you ain't seen in years and everybody going through something and God told them to call you. And, you know, so to stop all of that, just, you know, if you get a settlement, don't tell anybody. Just go ahead and do your research. Uh, uh, go ahead and put the money in. If you plan on giving somebody some money, just give them the money, you know, give them a cashier's check or, or whatever. And, and if they ask you where you got it from, say, you know, it doesn't matter, you know. Just just don't put yourself in a situation where you uh, uh, start talking about a settlement and you tell people how much it is and then, you know, that's opening up another can of worms. So uh, uh, that's my that I would take on that and finally when you're dealing with settlements always keep the settlement agreement always keep it you know you can always before you settle with somebody you can modify the settlement you can say I don't agree to this um, I need to change that uh, the terms of the settlement normally if they just trying to you know settle the case they probably would do it. They nine times out of ten, they just trying to get rid of it. They they would go ahead and you know modify it to to your specification and then send your revised copy and you sign it and uh, uh, do that. A lot of times when you're doing the settlement, I always ask, always ask. Look here, once I do this settlement, I want my money right now. But you have a lot of lawyers that will uh, let you sign the settlement and it'll say, you got to read the fine print and it'll say, you get your money in seven to ten days. 
nah. But they ain't already have their the the motion your motion to dismiss. You sign that. You sign the waiver. You sign all of that. And then you 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 be you getting your money seven to ten days. No, you read that fine print because if you sign that, that means the case is over. You need your money right there. And it ain't that you need it. You want your money right then and there. You don't want to wait seven to ten days. You know, and I, you know, I've had uh, a situation where a, a lady was saying she had to wait seven to ten days to her money. And that they was adamant about that. And you tell them, well, okay, well, if I got to wait for the client to give you the money within seven to ten days, then you come back to me and, and we'll settle within seven to ten days. But until then, I'm, uh, I'm not settling and, and then wait seven to ten days. So when I when I uh, assisted her with that, I'm trying to adjust my thing. When I assisted her with that, it you know they remodified it, sent it to her. She signed it, and then the next day she received her money. So uh, that's more important to that is that when you when you're dealing with settlements, you know you have to make sure you read the fine print. You know never hurry to jot down notes uh, about part of the settlement if you don't have if you have questions this would be the time to answer it uh this would be the time to address the settlement you know they you got to remember something when they're dealing with when you're dealing with uh negotiations with settlement they they already know about you they know all about you you think that they don't. They know all about you. They know your financial situation, where you work at. Uh, uh, they they know all about you. And they figured if they come to you with a lowball of a case, if you, you know, it's a, it's a difference in asking for uh, a certain amount or whatever, but they come to you with a lowball. And what they call, they, they because they feel like that you're so much in a, a financial situation that you would take anything and that you are so financially hard up that you will accept anything under any circumstances under any terms and that's what they do but if you uh, are negotiating you have to realize something they know about you so you thinking that they don't know anything about you that's that's false information they know a lot about you they know they that's their job when uh, you file a lawsuit is to get to know who you are. Because then, if there's something bad about you, nine times out of ten, when a lawyer can't, can't win a case, he start throwing in bad stuff about you so that, you know, it, it make it seem like you don't have a case or, you know, you this type of person. And I, I've had that done to me. I've had that done to me. So that's why when you're dealing with settlements and when you're dealing with issues regarding the settlements, get to know that attorney. Read their bio. Read their bio. Go on their website. We read, read the bio. The bio tells you everything about them. What type of what type of attorney they are. If they wrote books, it's gonna be in there. What they what they said, research them. So when they come to you and tell you, oh, well, you know, uh we can't offer you, okay, well, you, you know, that's it. When they tell you you know, because that's their game. They tell you, well, you know, I'm not authorized. Yes, they are. They're authorized to make any kind of settlement. Once an attorney is hired by a corporate, they are representing a corporate. And they will settle that case for whatever they think it is. So, with that being said, you take your little book and you write all your stuff down like I do. Uh, put tabs in it. And so, when you're talking about settlements, okay, this is what I'm dealing with. This you can ask them questions. You can hear what they're saying. Find it. You can uh, cross reference with what they're saying. Okay, they tell you. Well, you know, I had a um, somebody that I was uh, suing in court tell me that. Oh well, you can't ask for a meeting uh, in court because we're under COVID and 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 you know and and we can't get down there because of COVID. Well court had already sent an order saying that due to the COVID that they would not have an impersonal uh, 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 proceedings, that all the proceedings had to go either by phone or Zoom or whatever. So, you know, when they, they you, you got to realize something. It's, it's not about 
what you know because you can know everything about law you can know everything it's that trick that they try to tell you that oh you're not gonna win this or better yet you you know don't know what you're doing or they say based on the marriage well if it's based on the marriage then i should prevail and that's what you you playing checkers versus chess they're playing chess don't play checkers okay so when you're talking about settlement, you have to be adamant. You have to, you can, now you can send a, um, if you know that confident that you got a case that you're going to do it, you can send them a, what they call a 408 letter. A 408 that's in state or federal. 408 letter means that you're, 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 you're offering them a settlement. You're telling them what you want. You're telling them that it can be at no fault that of their own. But you're also telling them that any event that the settlement don't go through, that they can't use whatever that was in that settlement proceedings in the court against you unless you was doing something in bad faith. A 408 letter. When I uh, talk to attorneys and stuff, and I, I, I don't know if they, they I, I sense that they're trying to settle or they are trying to settle. I go ahead and tell them that uh, at this time, we're under 408 settlement. Any communication that's that's being used at this time is not going to be held against you or me. You can't use it in court. But then once I cease that, once I cease it, you can't cease it. Say, well, you know what? I'm just going to, if things ain't going right, they're not, they're not trying to come to no terms. You say, okay, cease, I'm ceasing uh, any kind of settlement. Now, anything that they send after that, yeah, you can use in court. But I would use in court. But I wouldn't just go ahead and, you know, 408 protects you because you, you may say something that, you know, may be against you, but you didn't realize that. Then all of a sudden, you know, you don't want them going into court and saying, well, Yana, she said this while we was offering a negotiation. Under the Rule 408, which is federal and state, it, stop, it stops them that y'all communicating. And while y'all communicating, you know, whatever that is being said will not be held against you. Uh, so that that is real good. You can use emails to, uh, um, under Rule 408, you, you know, emails being used during negotiation. That's not, that's a no-no. So, but... You can use it outside of that, okay? Uh, final, uh, I'm going to say when you're dealing with uh, settlements and you're dealing with this is that, um, you know, ask for a reasonable settlement. You know, some people would, would take their salary and, and six months of insurance. Some would take uh, 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 just big, one big lump sum of money. I have did a settlement on a job where I negotiated and I asked for my the remainder of my salary plus the option to apply for unemployment and that they gave they provided me at that time a high letter of recommendation so that I wouldn't have to they wouldn't have to verify my employment through them. Yeah, so you can do that. You there are several types of negotiation, but you have to know how to negotiate. That's why when people, you know, ask me or they call me and stuff, um, you know, I just started because uh, I jotted down here. Okay, I just started to start asking for a, uh, a intake fee. That means that I, because I'm getting so many people that text me and email and say, help me, help me, help me. And that's all good. You know, that's, that's all good. And some people, I just tell them, you know, I've told people I can't help them. Some people want to challenge what I say with what an attorney tells you. People have different views on how they're going to deal with it. And, and a lot of times you got to realize, like I said, you got to realize in my first video, attorneys do not, some attorneys do, even though they are, they specialize in litigation and they do not like to go to court. I, I, I cannot stress that enough, but a lot of people don't believe that. And if they take you to court, if they take your case to court, that that's going to be a fee. That's gonna be a fee, because no one. That's time. It's 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 more co easy and convenient to type up a piece of paper and submit it in court versus going before a judge and making an argument. That's some time. See, he probably could do the electronic filing and be through with it, or you know, have a run, a runner go down there and and 
foul it and be through with it. But when he do, he have to actually plan his time to go on the court. He don't know how long it's going to be, and his time is money. Same with mine. So, uh, like I said, you know, when you let, you know, I'm going to go recap. We're going to recap over some things so I make sure that I, I got everything right. And one of, one is is that have an open communication with an attorney. Make sure that when you're uh, getting ready to settle, do your research. Do you have your little book, your little notebook, and make sure you do your research. Make sure you find out what kind of settlement it is, um, the ins and out of it. Make sure when you're talking to an attorney, you keep your little notebook on hand. Ask him questions. If you if you have an attorney, make sure that you're doing everything right. Third, settlement. Make sure you do your research on your settlement. Make sure that when you do the research, you make sure you do it under Rule 408 so that anything that may be said against that they try to, you think that they're trying to use against you, that 408 protects you, that y'all having an open communication, and that there is nothing that uh, can be thrown up against you. Final, if you if you feel like it cannot be done, that a, that no settlement can be due, and keep in mind now they want they want you to take the lowest amount, and you feel that you know what this is not, you know this ain't working and stuff like that, then you need to send them a cease communication, telling them that you're not gonna talk to them uh, about settlements because you know that once you do that, the four eight stops. And then any emails that you use, uh, uh, that they send to you or you use, send to them, it can be used in court, okay? So I'm hoping you enjoy this. I, I, I feel like this is a three-parter. I feel like that, you know, if you don't know, how are you to decide that? But this, I'm giving doing this three-party pack so that you can decide if this is, if is taking a legal action, is worth it. You know, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, in my last video, is we're going to talk about something that so many people talk to me about, and that is class actions. We're going to talk about class actions and what to expect out of a class action and uh, other things, okay? So I thank you guys for uh, listening to me. I hope you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget... On the bottom of it, it shows you you can donate. Donate to this channel because you know what? All of this legal research that I'm giving you, it took me years to it. It took me it took me over a decade to learn it, to learn the court system, to do this. So people think that because I, you know, I'm just a hippie type person that you know what that um, my work is is halfway. No, it's not. It took me decades to learn. How, you can learn the law. But if you don't know the tricks and trades of it, it don't mean nothing. It don't mean a thing because they know the law is just like good and evil. A person can be, you can know what's good, but a, a person that's evil can know what, what, what to do to make you get like that. So you just take notes. I cannot tell you. This, they said a pen is mightier than the sword. It is. When you know, write down, keep your tabs. We're going to talk about class action and, and some other stuff that I may have forgotten to address. We're going to get with that. And I thank you for watching this second part of this video. And now the third part. Let's get ready to happen now.